We'll start with this fuel tank and then we'll put the fuel there inside the tank. We've got a fuel filter here and a pipe coming off the fuel filter which attaches to a carburetor and the carburetor attaches to the engine. We've just started this engine so we're still on choke and the engine will run for several cycles like this until it warms up enough to take off the choke. And now let's have a look what's going on now. Well, because the piston's now rising, it's creating a vacuum behind it, pulling up, and that's pulling in air here on this side of the carburetor. But because the choke has closed, a vacuum builds up inside here. So it's sucking fuel out of that jet quite heavily. There's more fuel in there than air ratio. So the engine's warm now, so we can remove the choke. There's less vacuum build up inside of here. There's less vacuum pulling out that fuel. We get a higher air to fuel ratio, but this time the mix is of a better mix to allow the engine to run now that it's warm. And so if we keep this particular image as if we're frozen in time, I can explain things a little easier. And so the mixture of air and fuel here has to be precise in order to allow this engine to run optimally. And in order for it to be precise, there has to be some controllability over the ratio of air and fuel that goes in there. So it has to be adjustable. And so most carburettors like this are designed to allow adjustability of that air and fuel. And we can do that here, sometimes known as the carb adjustment screws, the air screws or the fuel screws. I always relate to them as the mixture screws because it relates to how much fuel to air will be mixed inside the carburetor. And so like this, these screws are threaded and screwed through into the carb body. And some carburetors like this have two of these adjustments. Some have one, some actually have none. But as we can see, the screws there terminate inside a little fuel vein there and they actually protrude into that small vein. And these fuel veins actually allow some of this fuel here in the metering area through. And I'll bring that into a little closer. And so we can see there a little more clearly that this fuel down here in the metering area can travel through these little fuel veins like pipes in order to get to the inlet area there of the carburetor. And although the main jet here is responsible for the main source of fuel coming into the carburetor, these little fuel veins here are actually designed to contribute to the total amount of fuel going into the inlet there. And so the engine is designed to run effectively by receiving fuel from these two points. And so why is this the case then? Why is it designed this way? Well, let's remember that the fuel coming out of the main jet here is the main source of fuel for the main engine running, for general engine running that is. And the amount of fuel coming out of these fuel holes here is in a much smaller amount. And it's designed that way for fine engine tuning. So in order to get one of these engines running just so, the ratio of air to fuel inside the carburetor there has to be precise. So in a nutshell then, the bulk of the fuel is provided by the main jet here and the mixture screw fuel holes here provide a smaller amount for a precision ratio of air to fuel inside the carburetor. And in order for that to happen, the amount of fuel coming out of these little fuel holes here has to be adjustable. And that of course is where the fuel adjustment screws come in. If we take a look at just one of them here, as we said, the end of the screw that's screwed into the body actually keeps going and it protrudes out into the actual fuel vein there. So if we were to screw this adjuster screw in further so that it protrudes into the fuel vein further, we'd see that it'll start to choke off that fuel coming out. So there'd be less fuel coming out of that particular fuel vein. And of course, screwing the screw outwards would mean there'd be less restriction in there, allowing more fuel to be released. So both screws will operate in this way. I've shown a very basic model here of how these work. It's far more complicated than this in an actual carburetor, but I've had to show it in this way to get my point across. But one of the screws will be a H screw that will adjust the high resolution setting, and one will be a L screw, which will adjust the low resolution settings. And so bearing in mind that these screws have to be set at just the right place then for optimal engine running to allow that ratio inside the carb to be just right, then we can see that if these screws are screwed too far in, restricting too much of that fuel going into the carburetor, then we could see we'd get a problem here, a bog down problem. And this particular bog down problem would be due to a lack of fuel. So at this point, we normally hear people say that we've got a mixture that's too lean, meaning it's too lean of fuel. 
And although we've got fuel that comes out of the main jet here, it's the overall fuel from these two points, as I keep mentioning, because I want to really emphasise this, it's the overall fuel from these two points going into the engine that makes all the difference. And if this area isn't giving in enough fuel, then the overall fuel there won't be enough and so will be lean, and that will create the bog down. And so let's take a look on the opposite scale here. If we screw these screws too far out, then we'll see there that we're getting too much fuel going in there. And so at this point then, there'd be too much overall fuel going into the engine. And this would create another type of bog down. It would actually be due to flooding. And what we'd say this is now is that the mixture is too rich, meaning there's too much fuel going into the engine. Basically too rich with fuel. Again, too much fuel overall from those points that is. And that's why these screw settings have to be just so to allow the right amount of fuel to go in there, not too much or not too little, in order for optimal engine running. And that's why it can be quite difficult to get these settings right. But with a little practice and patience, it obviously can be done. And in basic, the way I do it is I stop the engine and then I screw both screws gently in until they stop. And then I screw them both out one full turn. So that's now set them to the same level each. I then start the engine and then I open the throttle. So I pull the throttle trigger to full revs and then I move this high screw because this is the high revolution setting screw. I move this back and forth until the engine sounds like it's running at its best. So basically I screw this in and out until I find desired running at high revs. And once I've found that, I'll let go of the throttle so the engine's idling. And once it's idling, I shall screw this screw in and out until I get the best engine running at low revs. And that's why this is called the L-screw for setting the low revs of the engine. Again, I want to emphasise though that this is a very basic explanation here of how you actually adjust these carburettors. There is a little more to it than this, but you can get used to it with a little tuition and a little practice. But I will have to emphasise that if you're in any doubt over this, then please do seek professional advice. And this particular issue here of incorrectly set mixture screws is a very, very common thing and one I come across very, very often. And so in a nutshell, that is, of course, how these mixture screw settings and the main jet work in sync with each other in order to run that engine efficiently.